Welcome to the patriotic memorial service conducted in conjunction with the 101st National Convention of the American Legion. The musical prelude was provided by none other than Maestro Rick Pedro, a nationally recognized pianist who cares passionately about veterans' cares causes. Honoring the service of America's bravest through his patriotic performances and giving back to the veteran community through philanthropy and benefit shows, let us give a warm American Legion welcome to Rick Pedro. I invite all those who are able to please stand as the flag of our country is brought forth by the American Legion Post 472 Color Guard of Houston, Texas, winner of the 2018 National Color Guard Contest. Please remain standing for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance following the posting of the colors. Color Guard, post the colors. Howard. Howard. Hand salute. Color Guard, halt. Ready, turn. Prepare to post colors. Hort. Ready? Post. Present. Hoor. Port. Order. Hoor. Reassemble. Hoor. Two. Would you please uncover for prayer? Heavenly Father, since the battles for the independence of our country, you have been called upon to protect, to give strength, and to give comfort to our soldiers. From the trenches of World War I, to the beaches and forests of World War II, to the jungles of Vietnam and the deserts of the Middle East, you have been called upon at this memorial service, once again, we ask that you be with us. We are here to pay tribute to those in the American Legion family who now rest with you. Provide comfort to their families and to their comrades who are here to carry on their legacy. In your name we pray, amen. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Legionnaires, please uncover for the remainder of their memorial service unless directed to do otherwise or as provided by national protocol.
A reading from the Gospel of St. John. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. And Jesus wept. Once more deeply moved, Jesus came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there will be a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you were always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord God. Good morning. We will now have the memorial prayer. May we bow our heads together as we partake into it now. Father God, we come together to honor and pay our respects to our American Legion men and women who have gone to home everlasting. They have paved the way for our freedom by sacrificing their lives. We ask that you give their families and friends the strength, comfort, and guidance they need to move forward every day. Father, please remove the understanding and release everything we need to know so that we can truly continue to work and keep freedom alive. And as well as, as we walk together into the next 100 years as the American Legion family surround our hearts during the times that we see our departed loved ones and it seems hard to bear. You told us you would never leave or forsake us and we know this to be true. 
according to Lamentations 322, we understand your love never ceases and your mercy is endless. Our fearless men and women are now our protectors, watching us from heaven. Let us walk, talk, and work with the spirit they have left behind and follow their examples. Let us remember and follow Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you whenever and wherever you go. We humbly ask that their sacrifice be a continuing inspiration because we live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And we all say together, amen. We are fortunate to have with us today an outstanding musical group from here in Indianapolis, known for their exceptional singing talent. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to present to you the Indianapolis Women's Chorus. During the last 30 years of my priesthood, I've done many, many funerals for veterans. Veterans that are my age or younger or older. But it's been a true ministry of love and passion, compassion to the veterans who gave so much of their lives in service of their country and for the grieving families that they left behind. I select usually at, this, uh, at these funeral masses the reading from Lazarus because it's one of my favorite readings for a funeral 
because of the exceptional bonding that took place between Jesus and Lazarus, his best friend, his good buddy, a place where he used to go to for refuge, for rest, for relaxation, and for entertainment, and was always welcomed by Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, because Martha was usually too busy in the kitchen to spend much time with Jesus, and Mary was at Jesus' feet listening to every word that was coming from his mouth. But it was a wonderful household of welcoming and hospitality. And Jesus needed a spot, a haven, because he was always on the go. People were always after him. And so when Lazarus died, it's no wonder that Jesus wept. He lost a part of himself, knowing that his best friend had passed away. And he wasn't there when it happened. There was a hot, steamy day on March 1st, 1970, in the jungles of Vietnam. And there was a young soldier there whom I had befriended when he first came into country. He came in shortly after I did. A little Mexican-American by the name of Nick from New Mexico. He was part Mexican, part Native American. And he was a little guy, very short, but very strong. And a fearsome warrior, far much so than I was. But one day, we were on patrol and we were in a single file walking towards our destination, which was to find this North Vietnamese Army regular bunker complex. We had spotted it the day, the day before, but it was too late in the day for us to do anything. So we went back the next morning, and we were greeted by a U-shaped ambush of enemy soldiers. And I found out that my little friend Nick was one of the one of six men separated from the rest of our unit under heavy fire. And we were unable to reach them at, for a while. And uh, what happened was is that we, as soon as we were able to put up a defensive line, we were trying to communicate with them and they were not responding so the radio was shot up. And there was no way to try to communicate with these six men who were separated from us. So I asked God for help. I said, Lord, I'm going to go out there and help them come back to us. If you would only give me the courage to go out to help rescue these men and bring me back home. I'll do anything you ask. So I went up and I told the guys I was going to go out there and somebody volunteered to go with me and we went out there and we provided a nice cover on the side and we were able to give relief enough for the one by one, I saw in the corner of my eye the six, four of the six men go by, back into safety. One of them was Nick. The lieutenant was killed. And my buddy and I went back to the safety of our lines. And on the way back, the comrade that went out with me was also killed. 20 years later, in Dayton, Ohio, 
I wanted to have a memorial service for my, my comrade who was killed that went out to rescue these guys with me. We went out there and got a few of my buddies that was hard to find, but after 20 years, was able to find 11 of them that were there on that day, and we had a reunion, and we had a ceremony at the graveside. And one of the men who came to that reunion was Nick, my little buddy that I had not seen since the end of the war, since I came home. And it was a wonderful reunion. He had a, a given, we had given him a rose to present to the mother. And he went to give that rose to the mother and he said, I want to thank you for the gift of your son and for Father Phil. For had it not been for them, I wouldn't be here today. And so there was a lot of weeping, tears of joy, tears of sadness for the loss of Herb and for the lieutenant. Then we move ahead for a few more years at another reunion, and this one was in Colorado, in uh, Pueblo, Colorado. And Nick came with his wife, and they came up to me and told me that he was diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer and that his days were numbered, that he wasn't probably gonna live much longer. He was in a lot of pain, but he wanted to see us all for one more time. And during that reunion, he asked me, when I die, would you please come and celebrate my funeral mass? I said, of course, Nick, I would do everything I can to come out there. So eventually he died a couple of months later. I got the word and I booked my ticket to Albuquerque. <clears throat> and he was, um, a funeral mass was in a little chapel on a mission of Indian, res of Indian Reservation. And uh, it was an unusual gathering. It was all Native Americans and the uh, congregation. We had a lot of family, a lot of friends. And I was the only white person there. And I was thinking to myself, these people are probably wondering, who the heck am I? coming to celebrate the funeral mass of their loved one. And I explained to them the story of how I met him in Vietnam 25 years prior and what had happened on March 1st and our subsequent reunions. And it was a healing moment for the community of that knew him, for the family that loved him. And there was a lot of weeping. But we knew that Nick was finally at rest. He was no longer in pain. And we interred him right there on the Indian Reservation. And it was a beautiful ceremony. My message today is that we have so many legionnaires that have passed on during the course of my tenure as the national chaplain. And I sent out many, many cards, letters of condolences, spiritual bouquets, masses, mass cards. And all those that I didn't know or wasn't aware of. And we, we honor each and every one of them this day. We weep for their loss, for the impact that they made on our lives, for the impact that they made on our posts, our departments, and yet we rejoice that they have entered into post everlasting to be with the Lord forever. And we recruit new people to come and replace all of those who have gone to post everlasting because this is a living organization and not a dead organization.
We continue to rise to the occasion to honor all of our men and women who are wearing the uniform of our country, who are in places of great danger this very day. And they are coming home. And we will be there to welcome them. And we will be there to tell them about our wonderful organization and ask them to be a part of the Legion family so that they can also feel that camaraderie that we have felt in all of the years that we have been members of this wonderful organization. So may God bless you all. Let us continue to fight the good fight. Let us continue to honor the Lord who has brought us here together to remember those who have gone before us and to celebrate those who are here to celebrate their lives. We make this prayer in your holy name, amen. Let us pause now to remember those who have made that ultimate sacrifice. All gave some, some gave more, some gave all. Placing the first wreath for the American Legion is National Commander Brett P. Reistad and National Adjutant Daniel S. Wheeler. Placing the wreath for the American Legion Auxiliary is National President Kathy Dungan and National Secretary Linda Boone. Placing the wreath for the Sons of the American Legion is National Commander Greg Doc Gibbs and National Adjutant Anthony Wright. Placing a wreath in remembrance of those in uniform who lost their lives serving America during the past year is Father Philip Salwa, National Chaplain of the American Legion, and Dr. Deborah Blanche, American Legion Auxiliary National Chaplain.
Let us remember those fellow comrades who remain prisoners of war, missing in action. As I direct your attention to the round table covered with white cloth and the empty chair draped with the POWMIA flag, may we be ever reminded of those for whom a final accounting has not yet been made. Will Jade and Ann Frazier, the 2019 Junior Air Rifle Sporter National Champion, please come forward to light the candle of remembrance. May this flame burn brightly in our hearts until all are safely brought home to our shores. May all that are able to, able to please rise and join me as we observe a moment of silence and a sounding of taps in honor of our missing friends and comrades and those transferred to the post everlasting. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back the Indianapolis Women's Chorus for another great selection followed by another great singing group from the Hoosier State. And it, is, it will be my pleasure to present to you Olivia and Alona Meek, the Meek sisters. Thank you.
God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with light from above. Father Philip Selwa, the National Chaplain, will offer closing prayer. Please continue to stand if you are able and remain standing until the colors have been retired. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the blessings of this day. We give you thanks for all, allowing us to remember all of our fallen comrades, our fellow legionnaires, whom you have called to yourself during this past year to post everlasting. For all of our fallen auxiliary members and sons of the American Legion that you have called before you, we ask you to bless them. Let your light shine upon them. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May the souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Legionnaires recover and prepare for the retirement of the colors. Color guard. Retire the colors. Color guard. Prepare and retrieve colors. Hort. And salute. Present Horn. Order Horn. Retrieve colors. Horn. Reassemble Horn. Two, as we prepare to conclude our 2019 Patriotic Memorial Service, 
Once again, let us give thanks to Maestro Rick Pedro for his musical renditions and God-given talent. Please give him another big hand. This concludes the 2019 Patriotic Memorial Service. Thank you for your attendance. May your day and all the days to follow be blessed.